In this video, I'm going to be making these brilliant pop-up bench dogs for my workbench to upgrade my work holding options. First, I want to make sure the table of my pillar drill is square to the drill bit and it's a little bit off. That's better. I need to make a drilling guide to help me drill perfectly plumb using this 20mm force and a bit. And then over at the vise I marked the position where I want my holes to be and using the drill guide centred over those marks I can then drill them out and I used an auger bit for this. These tend to get a bit of a bad reputation for tear out but as you can see the drilling guide eliminates that. These holes look nice and clean. And these will be perfect for some bench dogs that I already have. So now onto the more complicated job of the pop-up bench dogs. I thought about both buying and making my own dowels but I already had some of this hardwood dowel measuring about 28 millimeters. I think I salvaged this from an old parasol. I want the holes in the workbench to be perfectly in line with the vice dogs so I used a framing square to mark up the locations and two sets of holes should allow me to clamp work pieces of varying widths. And I'm just going to check with the tape measure that they're both the same distance away and it looks perfect. The auger bit I'm going to use for this is a beast. Talk about tail wagging the dog, it weighs more than the drill. I mark a starting point for the holes with an awl and then I can get drilling. And this time I'm not even going to use a drilling guide for this, mainly because with these longer bits it's actually pretty easy to see when you're drilling plumb. And these don't really have to be perfect anyway, but they do need to be pretty good. This bit leaves a nice clean hole because it's nice and sharp and as long as you go slow with these auger bits they're not too bad but a force and a bit is another good option and would usually leave a cleaner cut. I just didn't have one the size needed. At the moment the dowel is too tight in the hole so I'm going to sand it just by hand. I want to remove most of that paint and get them so that they fit inside the hole easily with a tiny bit of wiggle room. This is still too tight so more sanding needed. Here's a quick look at how plumb the holes are. Not too bad. The party trick of these pop-up dogs come courtesy of these things. I'll leave a link to these in the description box and talk about where the idea came from for this later in the video. The main shaft of these measures 9mm so I'm drilling a hole roughly in the centre of what will be the bottom of each dog. And these have a square edge to them on one side, so I get in there with a 6mm chisel to create a channel for that to sit in. And then the top of them have these lugs, so I just need to increase the size of the top part of the hole. And for that I'm just going to use a step cutting bit. and then it's a nice tight friction fit. I can then insert it in the hole and mark up the length I need the dog to be so that I can get it trimmed to length. That's working well and I can just do a bit of chisel work to clean up the end grain and get it sitting nice and flush to the work surface. I'm going to add some of my own handmade oil wax wood finish to the inside of the holes and then buff away any excess. This should make the dogs slide in and out nice and easy. And if you're interested in buying some of my KB oil wax, I'll leave links to it in the description box below. It's available in both original and food safe versions and you can find out more by clicking those links. I also applied it to the sides of the dogs. And for the top end grain, I'm adding hard wax oil, which is the same finish I used on the worktop. I really love these and I can't recommend them enough. I'm not sure who came up with this idea originally. It's not my idea, but I've seen similar on the Hue and Awe, Measured Workshop and Small Space Creation channels. All of them slightly different variations on a similar concept as this. And John Heiss on I Build It did some that were totally handmade without the spring mechanisms. I've also got an old video of mine that I'll link to below for bench dogs that don't require the mechanism either. They actually push up from underneath, but they can also sit flush to the work surface. 
they served me really well for a few years as well. So you can check out all of those. If you wanna do more research on this stuff, there'll be links in the description box below. The advantages of these are that one, you'll never lose your bench dogs or have to go looking for them. Two, you won't ever lose things down the holes because obviously the bench dogs sit flush so nothing can fall in there. Three, because they sit flush, they give you a nice consistent flat workbench surface. And four, they're great fun to play with. I think the locations that I've added them to my workbench should serve me well, but I've got plenty of mechanisms and dowel left over that I can use to add more should I need to in future. I have another video about the extended vice jaws. If you want to check that out, there'll be a link down below. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, plus get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, you'll find links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thanks for watching.